somebody to bring in their horses. Now, think of it this way. If you've got a bunch of horses, and you're going to attack a fortified Chinese city, who's going to win? Horses or walls? Walls. So put this down. It isn't just the horses. They're going to be very successful in big open field battles and so forth, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But sometimes they went up against fortified cities where you got walls, and the people are on the top of the wall, just like dumping stuff and putting stuff down and so forth. But I mean, it's like if I'm going to be a leader and you're in a wall, a walled city, all right, guys, we're the Mongols. We're going up against these guys over here. How are we going to beat them? I need ideas. How are we going to beat them? What? Back in the night, but again, <laughs> well, if they're smart, they'll have like night guards and so forth. If everyone tries to climb over the wall, they'll kill us. Now, one thing we can do, and this, this happened in time, and this happened in medieval times too, but other people would do this. We are like, all right, you guys are in the wall, surrender. Oh, you're not going to surrender. Oh, we're not going anywhere. And if you try to get out, we'll kill you. It's called a siege. A siege. Try to outlast them. Now, sometimes you have siege weapons, right? seen in some very different films and so forth. I might try to bring some kind of like devices up that are higher than the wall so I could bring my people down into your over your walls and into your territory. Alright? I mean I don't know if like I don't know if we built a fort and left it there and the Trojans did that. And that I mean that happened once once in history where you like fool the Trojans with the horse. Sometimes you just throw carcasses and nasty things over to get them all sick and so forth. Here's another thing, very, very important. Listen to this. Because the Mongols do this very effectively. This is brought up in the film, it's in the uh, documentary as well. Sometimes what the Mongols would do is they would send out people ahead of time. Right? They'd send a person out ahead, not the military necessarily, but somebody who like will send the word. The Mongols are coming. The Mongols are coming. They're right, we've got our wall, we're safe. That's what the last city thought. Mongols showed up outside the city gate, demanded surrender. The surrender on day one, you could live. You could be under the control of the Mongols, but you could live. But that city, oh my gosh, that city resisted. And Genghis Khan followed through with his promise. Every living creature would die. What are you guys going to do? Fight? Why do you guys want to fight? Because then you can't like surrender. <laughs> it's like, I'm a surrender monkey. Yeah, you can have this town. I wish you did. I want to still do my business. But we see when the Mongols, after they conquer you, they're like, we don't care what you do. You know, you can have your religion, blah, 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 your business. It's called terror. You know how to spell the word terror? T-E-R-R-O-R. The Mongols did this very effectively. It actually saved them a lot of their own casualties. They went forward, and they spread the word ahead of where they were in attack. And they basically said they sent their people ahead. And the message was, if you surrender to the Mongols, you will live. But the Mongols are so powerful, they could very well beat you. And so the best thing to do is, fear the Mongols being able to fight effectively. If you fought them in the open field, though, of course, it made a big difference. Crazy! Actually, I was thinking of this because, um, yeah, we forked over the money for Disney Plus and we watched Mulan over the weekend. And there was a scene in Mulan, and I was like, oh, I know what's going on here, right? So, they're fighting against the Chinese, Mulan is on the Chinese, and I forget which fictional group is fighting against. And they're attacking them, and all of a sudden, they turn around and they flee. When, when you're running away with trees, can anything good come from that? No? If I'm running away, you're not the tent. If you're attacking me and I'm running away, I just expose my back to you. That's not good. Because I'm much better fighting forward than I am behind. Because you can shoot me in the back unless I get out of your way and get a, a distance. And yet, if I'm on horseback and I can actually fire, 
while I was treating. That's pretty good, isn't it? And sometimes, write this down, sometimes the Mongols would fake a retreat. Right? They'd go up and attack. And uh, after a little while, they would retreat. And the other side was like, yay, we're going to win. And the other side kept attacking. <laughs> and we would retreat. Maybe into an area that we had planned in advance. I don't know, perhaps like a valley or a gorge where I retreat into this valley or gorge and you follow and all of a sudden you notice enemy on both sides pointed at you. This is trap. Did they do that in military? Be careful. That was one of their favorite Mongol tactics, to try and lure the enemy into those kinds of traps. And also to be very agile on their horseback. And then when those guys would go, they have to get extra day out of horse and so forth. And sometimes if they're like, I'm a little low on uh, nutrients, then what are they going to do? Like, kill one of the horses and eat it right there and then? No, they just take something from the horse. Could give you a little bit of the extra iron from a horse. Maybe an iron Yeah. Don't take all the blood, because the horse is needed to keep going. But yeah, then they would take some of the blood in order to be like, oh gosh, this sounds like fun. <laughs> That'd be a Mongol raider on horseback. Fun. Okay? So, but here's the deal. This is what surprised people. Make sure you have this. The Mongols were not this traditional big city civilization kind of crew. They were nomadic. You know what's so called nomadic? They were nomads. They were nomads. They travel around, yeah. I mean, they got their horses, they've got their like livestock and so forth. They go, they move their animals from place to place. Um, eating the grass when it's fresh, and then they're like, oh, we ate all the fresh grass, and they keep moving, and so they kind of go like in a circuit. Over time, they get to be very, very good at being able to move, and they're very mobile and so forth, but they don't build big cities and so forth. But it's fascinating because here's the deal. Genghis Khan, in his lifetime, conquered a great deal. His sons and grandsons also continued conquering. China would fall. The Mongols will be in charge of China for, I want to say, a couple hundred years. And then eventually the Chinese will be like, we don't want Mongols in charge of us. Why not? Because we're Chinese. We wouldn't want to be in charge of China. Chinese people. So eventually there will be the Chinese will eventually get control of that. The Russians, write that down, the Russians will also on those guys, will also fall under the control of the Mongols. And when we look at the Russians, it's like, whoa, those guys are completely snuffed out in an early stage in their history. I mean, huge area. If you look at this map, it would be pretty much, I mean, compare that to, take a look at here in the modern map. All right, see Russia, big orange, and most of traditional Russia is over in the west. The Mongols conquered it. They went on horseback over over the frozen steppes of the uh, Central Asia. The way when you take your horseback over there, the springtime sometimes it's a bit swampy and so forth, but in the wintertime they can actually move very quick, and they conquered it all. They conquered it. They conquered it. And the Russians hated the Mongols being in charge of them. Like they had a special word for the Mongols. You ready? Tartar, T-A-T-A-R-S. I don't know if that has anything to do with tartar sauce, because tartar sauce is really good on fish and things like that and so forth. But tartar is what the Russians call the Mongols. T-A-T-A-R-S. Tartar. Translation? Men from hell. The Russians call the Mongols men from hell. And yeah, because they beat them. The Mongols made their way down into the Middle East, conquered Persia. I mean, this is like an amazing thing that they have done. They've got all this energy and tactics and so forth, 
and they were able to conquer a vast empire, none of which has been seen in history up until that point. Taking areas of Asia and connecting it under, now, was there one Mongol ruler to rule them all? Yeah, sort of, kind of, not always. Put this down, because it's actually kind of important. Genghis Khan was the original great Mongol ruler, okay? And he had lots of sons, <laughs> and lots of grandsons, and actually somebody looked and they were like doing some DNA thing, and they were like, if you were to do like a DNA of all the people on the planet Earth, you could find one person in history that's got more DNA connection to them than any other person that we can name as a person. And that would be Genghis Khan. Because his kids and grandkids ended up controlling large areas of Asia and parts into Europe. And so what did they do with all of that power? They had lots of wives and other women that they had children with. And like, so what does that mean? Well, that means that that Genghis Khan bloodline ends up going over many, 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 many people over time. Just a curiosity kind of a thing. So people are doing that. I mean, when I was your age, you could just could take a swab of saliva or blood or whatever and send it up to some place, and all of a sudden, you have 10% you know, Iroquois Indian or something like that. How many of you guys have got family members that have had like some like blood test, DNA, kind of thing like that? I mean, they're kind of interesting questions, right? But anyway. Genghis Khan related to many, 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 many people. Like any of that, and we'll get to you next time. Watch the rest of the video. Watch the video.